Let's Amen. read Ephesians. Are over Ephesa. Chapter two. Chapter two. Let's read from verse one to seven. Revale one of it tower seven. We won't take long. Ephesians. Gas Chenago by Ephesa. Chapter two. By Ephesa two. One to seven. Retlomola one. Rio Felecha Mola seven. And you. He made life when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins in which you were once walked. You were following the ways of the world, of this world, influenced by this present age in accordance with the prince of the power of the air. The spirit who is now work, at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving who fight against the purpose of God, disobedient. Among these unbelievers, we all once live in the passions of our flesh. In other words, it's our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging the desires of human nature, without the Holy Spirit and the impulses of the sinful mind. We were by nature children under the sentence of God, wrath or wrath, just like the rest of mankind. But God, being so rich in mercy, because of his great and wonderful love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead or spiritually dead, and separated from him because of our sins. He made us spiritually alive together with Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We can read going down, but let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I was reading this. I found a lot of lessons. If you can read from the beginning, you realize that the Bible says, we were not even close to him. We were lost. If we were lost, it means there is someone who came to, to search for us. We, we were lost. And when you read here, you realize that all those who are lost, they are ruled by spirit of Satan. But when you read two here, it shows that we are no longer lost now. It says, but there are still some people, I mean, who are working on the spirit that we were in before. Where, we, where they are influenced. It's like now we know that we have been influenced led by that spirit, controlled by that spirit. The power of the air that rules on earth. If you learn that, you realize that those power of the air will make them to be disobedient. Just, just write disobedient. Disobedient is a very broad topic. Because if I read here, I see that where we are reading, the Bible says it is the power of the air and the, the influence from, from the, the, the government on top of the, princip the principalities. That rules people to disobey. And now here, it shows that and then we are out. But there are still others who are still disobeying. Who are disobeying. I've read from the scripture, I found that disobedience is a preaching of those who are chosen. 
When we preach disobedience, we are not preaching to the people who don't fear God. We preach to the people who say they are Christians. So now here we are being warned here that the, the spirit of the present age, the influence of this present age that makes people to go out of the way and disobey God is coming from the influence that makes people to do what is wrong. By the same present age and the power of the air which is called Satan. And the Bible shows that always they work but they work disobediently. I don't know if you are hearing that. You are doing something but you are doing it wrong. You are doing something but you are influenced. You call yourself a Christian but you are controlled. When I say this topic is so broad here we are talking about people that we moved from them but who are still controlled by the spirits of the air and the powers of the air. Not people who are saying we know the truth. People who are influenced to do what is wrong. To stand against the will of the Father God and the purpose of Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, when I read this, I realize <laughs> that approaching people and say they are doing wrong, <laughs> they can even fight you. But disobedient has <laughs> been a spirit <laughs> that takes you away from God. <laughs> disobedient, <laughs> it becomes a spirit <laughs> that misleads you away <laughs> from <laughs> the purpose of God. <laughs> you can still do what you are doing, but you are doing it in the contrary. When I read this, I realize that the people that will be judged are those of the disobedience, not the wicked. Not the wicked. The wicked, they know their destiny. Because the disobedient, they, they, they are there, but you can still see them. Because disobedience is there to separate the righteous and the wicked. I don't know if you're hearing me. So I'm here to speak about the disobedience. When you see yourself disobeying, it's not because of your wish. Everybody wants to do what is right. But you find that there's an influence. There are some powers on the air that makes you to do what is wrong when you know it's right. When you know what is right, you end up doing wrong. I don't know if you're hearing me. Let me show you from the scriptures. If you read Matthew 21, if you read from 28, you see a parable. Matthew 21, from verse 28, you will see a parable of two sons. Let me read 28. 28. Verse 28. Are you there? Parable of two sons. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he regretted it. Amen. And changed his mind and went. Then the man came to the second son and said the same thing. And he replied, I will say. But he did not go. Which one of the two did the will of the father? Here Jesus was saying that, you know, you are approved 
After you agree from the statement you are given, you are approved after you act. Not only just agree by the ways. Because everybody can still talk is a Christian. Yeah, you can see Everybody can say, I will do this. Or other can say, I can't do that. Can I say this? Obedience and disobedience, they come from the conviction. If you are convicted by the Holy Spirit to do what God wants you to do, you will obey. If you are convicted by the Holy Spirit to do what God wants you to do, you will obey. Here you can see the first son. When he was given an assignment, he said, I will. But later, when he was sitting, in fact, he said, I will not. But later, he regretted what he said. Because he was convicted. The reason why the Bible talks about regret is because there was conviction. You cannot regret unless you are convinced. I don't know if you are hearing me. We need people to be convinced so that they must not disobey. We need people to be convinced so that they must not disobey. For you to, to be convinced, you need the Holy Spirit to convince you. But look at the second side. Immediately he says, I will. But he never made any move. I don't know if you're hearing that you're seeing this. So Jesus was showing the reason why many people will fail to do what God wants them to do. Will fail to do what God wants them to do and end up disobeying without a reason. Without, without even listening to their conscience. You need to be convicted so that you do what God wants you to do. The reason why you are disobeying is not that you didn't hear. You deny without checking your conviction. One of our challenges is we don't listen to our heart. When God said wake up and pray, you don't listen why you are supposed to pray. Sometimes God can allow you not to sleep so that you pray prayer. Check your conviction you realize that God wants you to pray. The reason why there's disobedience today we are fighting our conscience. When God is speaking we don't even have regrets of our failures. I don't know if you are hearing me. So that is why many people today they are on the other side. So Jesus shows that there were people who were given they were given given the gospel but at the long run they could not listen to their conscience these ones were like Pharisees and scribes so by the time of Jesus everybody was praising them in public they were holy but when they are hidden they were sinners can I say something to you there are times where God will Check your conviction when you are alone. Because your conviction matters and becomes real when you are alone. Not when you are with others. Everybody is a Christian in front of another. But when you are alone, your conviction speaks with you. Your conscience speaks with you. And bring a right conviction. And if you stand with the right conviction, you will always Always obey God. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. When we look at the story of Jonah, you could still see that this man was convicted. He had God, but he took another journey. And the storm rose. Because many storms, they are there because of disobedience. 
I thank God for my storms. Because they make me to check my, my life and my character. Sometimes when, people, when things are going well, you, you just rejoice because things are going well. But you must thank God for storms. I don't know if you're hearing me. Where, where you can look at yourself and try to find if truly you're obeying God. I don't know if you're hearing me. I thank God for those storms. So when your conviction is right, you can rejoice in the time of sorrow. Can I tell you something? Can you tell you something to your neighbor? When your conviction is right, you will rejoice in the time of sorrow. When your conviction is, is proving you that you are a child of God, you will rejoice in the time of sorrow. I don't know if you are hearing that. So many of us are coming to church, but God is speaking, but we are doing contrary. Can I tell you this? That storm that has happened because of your challenge, you can correct it by doing what is right. There are some things that does not need prayer. It needs you to stand up and do what is right. I don't know if you are hearing me. There are some things that you will travel everywhere, searching for healing, blessing, or whatever. But you need to stand your ground and say, I'm a child of the living God. I want to obey God. I want to do what is right. Because even that challenge came because of disobedience. I don't know if you are hearing me. Check somebody and say, hey, what you are facing, don't worry about it. Because when you obey, you will never face it again. That disobedience will never be part of you again. Because you are going to obey and do what God wants you to do. If you believe, say amen. Say amen. amen. Shake somebody and say, hey, I want to obey him. I found people who obey God. They don't have fear. They don't have fear. The time when I obey God, when I realize I obey God, I don't care who says what. I don't care who say what. So when I see a challenge, I go back and check my life and see if truly I'm standing with the will of God and the purpose of God. Let me tell you something. The purpose of God is the one that brings and executes the results that God wants to bring. Listen, the reason why the Bible says that disobedience affects the purpose of God. Listen, the disobedience, they complain when there is suffering. But those who are obedient, they know that this suffering is a problem they will bring good. The purpose of God is to bring suffering so that the wrong people will leave you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Because when you are blessed, they will beat their chest and you won't praise God. But now what you are facing is the purpose of God. So when you are challenged, don't worry about that challenge. Look at your obedience and get rid of this obedience. You will find the purpose of God bring out the results you need. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you shake somebody and say, hey, don't worry about what you are facing. It is the purpose of God. It is the purpose of God. And the purpose of God must hit your chest and make your conviction to be right. So that whatever you face and challenge what is right, you will come out with the right power of following God. You come out with the good steps of following God. Remember the good steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. We need Christians, listen, we need Christians who don't care about what they are facing. We need Christians who know that where I am, I've been ordered by God. You have been placed there and you won't die there. You have been placed there to prove certain wrong. What you need to do, check if you are not disobeying God. If you are obeying God, carry on, brother. Carry on enjoy yourself. Even when you are facing problems. I don't know if you are hearing that. In 
in fact, I'm here to tell you this. If you can see the way I'm telling you, I'm telling you without compromise. Because you have been worrying about the challenge you have been facing. And you have been questioning why this. Hey, what is important? Is you need to know if you are disobeying God. Because disobedience crushes the purpose. Listen, the purpose of God, it is the formula of bringing answers. So if now you are on your bed, you are applying the formula. And when you are applying the formula, every step will take you to the result. I don't know if you are hearing me. I see some Christians here. Hey, apply the formula. Apply the formula. Get rid of disobedience. Get rid of disobedience. If you believe, say amen. If you read First Samuel, 15, 17 to 23, 15, 17 to 23, you will see disobedience. I want to tell you why, why this man disobeyed God. Just write it down and look at me. Disobedience, sometimes 95% of it, 1 Samuel 15, 17 to 23, you know, disobedience, Sometimes in 95% of it has been brought by the people around you. Influenced by the wrong people around you. Many 95%. Because even when you are hearing God, they will talk. Even when you are hearing God, they will try to show some character. To show that you are not hearing God. Sometimes they will prove to you that you are late. God is not doing anything. So that you find another way out to disobedience. So it happens to Saul. Saul was just disobeying. Disobeying. But this was a worse disobedient. When you read about him, you see people gathering. And they were waiting for a prophet called Samuel. And this thing is still happening today. Now Saul changed his position. And he made himself a prophet. And he wanted to sacrifice and do what the prophet is supposed to do. Because of the people, it's still happening now that when you see people, you do what you're not called to do. This is a king who was supposed to sit in the chair and wait for the prophet to come and do what God has told him. The difference here, when Samuel was coming, was coming to do what he has been taught. But you know, but King Saul was coming to do what Samuel has spoken to him. There was a great difference of doing what people have said and do what God has said. So now, Samuel here was coming to do what God has spoken. And it was not needing a lot of people. And God allowed Samuel to delay. When Samuel delayed, this man just come when there are many people. We are influenced by many people. We are influenced by our families, friends and brothers. This is the time that when you do something, you don't do it because people are watching you. Many of us, we are disobeying God because people are looking. My wife, she's saying, she's saying we must do it this way. Disobeying God. My husband is saying we must do it this way. Disobeying God. Friends are saying this. This is the time where we don't look at the crowd, but we look unto him. There are some people who are here. Your friends have been influencing you. Look at your life. There's no result. But you can tell yourself today, I want to obey God. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to get rid of disobedience. Listen, even when you are alone, even when you are alone, they can leave you. But stand your stand and do what God wants you to do. You know, most of the time we speak about Makaya, whereby the, the many, many prophets.
prophets will prophesy what is good. And when this man came and said, I won't say anything unless God tells me something. Any prophets who are just looking because of the favor from the king, money from the king, because from that, on that time, everything was from the king. So whoever is close to the king will speak good things to the king. Can I say this? But there was this Makaya who said, I don't want to disobey God. I want to obey God. Whatever I hear, I say it. We need Christians who are not influenced by other people. Check somebody and say, hey, you, you can influence me. I know my God, you can influence me. I can't hear what you are saying. I can't hear what you are saying. Ask your neighbor, say, who's influencing you? Listen. Don't be influenced by crowds. Don't be influenced by crowds. Listen. When the crowd is enough, it brings punishment to you when you are disobeying God. Remember what happened to Herod when he sat on the uniform and he spoke words and everybody praised God. When, when, they, when they praised him, when they were busy praising him, worms came out and he died. Don't be influenced by the crowd. This is the time that you, know, you don't do things which God doesn't want you to do. This is the time that you don't, look, you don't just do things things because you have been told to do. This is the time that you hear God and you do what God wants you to do. This is the time that you obey him only even if your parents are disobeying you. I don't know if you are here me. Some of you are here but you are not allowed to be here. You have disobeyed them because God wanted you to be here. But I am here to prophesy you that this year you will see the results of your obedience. I say you will see the results of your obedience. Sometimes you love to disobey because you are standing with the people of influence. But listen, God is the creator of heaven and earth. Do what God is telling you. That's why, hey, do what God is telling you. Can you speak louder and say, do what God is telling you. Don't be influenced by friends. Don't be influenced by neighbors. Don't be influenced by the condition of your life. Don't be influenced by what people are saying. Don't be influenced by your church. Don't, don't be influenced by your pastors. But be influenced by the spirit of the living God. We need Christians who can be influenced by the spirit of the living God. If you look at this one, in 2 Timothy 3 verse 2, in the last days, the sin will bring punishment Amen. unto disobedience. Because people will be loving themselves. They forget that they need to obey God. Oh my God. People will be like, you know, in, in Second Timothy 3, 2, in Hebrews 3, 16 to 19, in Hebrews 3, 16 to 19, disobedience is there to disqualify you on what God has promised you. If you read this, Hebrews 3, 16 to 19. You will see a lesson. You will see a lesson. When the Israelites disobey. And the Bible says they could not see the promised land. Disobedience is a very deadly sin. And is influenced by the spirit. Think about when the whole nation of Israel in the desert, they were supposed to walk to Canaan with few days. But disobedience takes them to die off in the desert. But if you read here, you will see that disobedience disqualifies you unto the promises that God has given you. In other words, the moment you disobey, you are blocking the promises of God upon your life. I don't if you are hearing me. Can you tell me say, my friend? Stop disobedience. Listen. We have read the scripture today of there is a due 
season, appointed time. When, when you are carrying on disobeying and God is not speaking, don't ever think he's not watching. There will be a day where this day will be of rewards. Listen, even when you try to make you to obey, it's for your good. Is for your good. Listen, you can come to church and people praise you that you are a Christian. But disobey, obedience affect you. You will pray and pray and fast and fast you won't see results. There are some people who are here today when I'm speaking. Already you have been affected by disobedience. God is speaking with you. He's telling you that this is wrong. Don't do it, my child. This is wrong. Don't do it, my child. And you are no see punishment. And you are praised when you are doing that. No one knows. Your pastor does not know. Your friend does not know. But there are some people who know. And God is watching. I don't know if you are hearing me. And as God is watching, as long as you won't reach your canon. You won't reach your canon. Today, I want you to go to your canon. I want you to go to your canon. Remember this year, what you are born for, we must see. We must see that you cannot die without a purpose. You cannot die without living a life you are born to live. Those people who are making it in life. They were also in nine months in the womb of their mothers. Even yourself, you are not different with them. But listen, you are better than them because you are born and bred by the word of God. You are different. You are more than the conqueror. You cannot carry on disobeying God. Crush this disobedience. Stand your ground as a child of God. Carry on doing what God wants you to do. Listen to this. You can be praised by people in wrong things. Hey, allow these people to leave you when you are going to heaven. The road of heaven is a narrow road. It's not a wide road. You come alone. You come alone. You are checked alone. You are not checked with your spouse. You are not checked with your friend. Come alone. Don't come in a wide road. Come in a narrow road. Where you will check yourself. How you walk. In your narrow road. You check yourself. Where you put your steps. If you put it in a wrong place. You will fall. And you will never rise again. I want to prophesy someone. Who's listening to me today? That God is carrying you to your assignment. Just obey God. Just obey God. Crush that disobedience. Crush that disobedience. I don't know if you are hearing me. Shake somebody and say, hey. I just want to tell you that this thing is happening. When God wakes you up to pray, do you pray? Can you ask your neighbor? Only simple thing. When God wake you up, do you? Just simple issues of crushing the Holy Spirit every day. When your sleep is finished, what are you doing when other people are asleep? Mm. Because that sleep is not finished by accident. God might be speaking and you're not hearing. Can you pray? Can you pray? When other people are asleep, when you are awake, you will hear God whisper in your ear. You will hear a direction. You will hear a new life. You will hear a new assignment. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. This is the time that after this service, you people, you crash. You crash everything. You crash what is wrong around you. 
Because your obedience takes you to your destiny. But your disobedience make your ship to be wrecked. I don't know if you are hearing me. This is the time that you can stand tall and tell yourself, I'm called for something. I'm not just living here on this earth. I must do something that will be visible. And I must find out why I'm here. And I must carry on with my life with the right purpose before God. But don't stop disobeying God. Let me show you maybe the last scripture we close. Maybe we just show this scripture we close. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Chapter 3, verse 3. Tito 3, verse 3. Chapter 3, verse 3. Tito 3, 3. Ask someone, say, are you obeying God? Are you obeying God? Before you read the scripture, I want to tell you. We are in the last days. Anytime there can be a rapture. I told you how I saw the rapture. There will be no time to confess. The moment when rapture appears, even confession will be taken. Boom, everything is finished. It's a full stop. I don't know if you're hearing me. So you must Vano. guard your life. You must guard your life. You know, one of the things that devil is using now is money. In these last days, money, 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 money will send many people to hell. Money, money, money is your problem. The moment when the marriage, you know, is going up, Satan just hit money. You will see the marriage going down. Money. You will see the character changing. Those people who love each other begin to fight. Money is our problem. Right now, when things are fine, everything is fine. Even the big mistake is small. But when money comes and go, you will see actions that you have never seen. Even those who say we are Christians, you will know they are not. You will see in the marriage there is fire. When money is no longer entering, problem, divorce can come, separation can come, fighting can come, problems to problem. Some problem will leak out to the family. There will be some calls that, hey, hey, yeah, I'm tired. But now, Everything is quiet. No call going out. No call going out. No call going out. When Satan wants to hold you from now to three years to come, you will hit your money. Check your character. Check your life. Are you obeying God? Are you still the same Christian? When money is there or not? If this one loses a job, what will happen? Are you still the same Christian? Are you still the same Christian? I'm saying this because it's going to affect many. Many things you are relying on will be heated. So that you show your color. You show your disobedience or your obedience. Let's check what will happen to you. It's no issues of rapture will just happen. It will happen after you show your color. There has to be a test of all over the world. And this test is coming. Are you obedient or disobedient? 
I want to pray for you. So that you see the importance of your soul. And understand that there are things even when you are not there, you don't care. Even if those things are not there, you praise your God. You carry on doing what God wants you to do. Can you read Tatas 3 verse 3? Read it aloud. <laughs> Wata wabona la le rato la modi mo mapil mo poloche ware na le rato la gorata baatu. Here verse four says, but when the goodness and the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, appeared, it Amen. just it just remind me uh, our scriptures, Titus two eleven. In order in kopo chale wala la na tito two eleven. Titus two eleven says. The grace teach us to say no How well to our preciousness. We are able to obey. We are able to obey. We cut disobedience. This is the scripture that shows that he saved you. He saved you. He's there. He's there. And he's around today.